Hello everyone. Welcome to the Back to Basics Piano Method. I'm Marlene Moore, your hostess and creator of the Back to Basics Piano Method curriculum books 1 to 10 and other books too. Our motto is love, achievement, freedom, fun. And that means love, achievement, freedom, fun for the student and for the teacher. All of the books are available here, jwpepper.com, my score, Marlene Moore. Uh, I will also Put the link outside of the YouTube video for you. I hope everyone had a good week. I certainly did. I got my big book published, 220 pages of book. It's called Performing Without Fear, My Journey in Stage Fright to Overcome Stage Fright. Actually, I'm calling it uh, my journey because it's really my life. And um, we all have our journeys. Today, we're going to journey through book two. And this is the important book because it is the pivotal event between books one and three. We've already seen uh, a good part of book one. And you might wonder, why did I spend so much time on book one? Why did I do that? Well, because it's the most important book, that's why. Uh, they have to have a really good foundation in rote teaching to be able to play all of the pieces very fluently in book one before you get to book two, because it gets a little bit harder here. All right, I'm going to teach you something called sequential learning today, but before I do that, I'm going to play through peanut butter, and we'll talk about the other ones. Peanut butter gets a little more grown up here. It matures. It what used to be like this. The five-finger pattern on the C above middle G. Uh, C and to G above middle C and the C to G below middle C. Now it's taken on a new identity. It is going this way. It's skipping. Skip, 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 skip. So all you have to do here is to show the students where the skips are, and they get it right away because they already know the rhythm for peanut butter. Here we go. And they think they're very grown up doing this because it's a much longer piece. Uh, you don't need to do any kind of steps for the learning here. They get it quite easily. And the, the Mr. Smiley down here says play all the C's, which they can do now. They can find C very easily. And that's pretty much all there is to peanut butter, except for the left hand. down at the bottom of the page says clap and count. Be sure to have them do that. Knock on wood. And this is the time to introduce quarter note, whole note, half note. You don't need to call them that. Just say this gets one count. This gets four counts. Two, three, four. This one gets two. And then the children 
are asked how many counts down here. We're going to talk about sight pieces next week. So I'm just talking about the rote pieces right now. Butterfly has also taken on a new form. He's evolved from cocoon to real butterfly. He's flying around now, really flying in that same pattern. Skip, 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 skip. Skip. And that little sequence is the same thing for every one of these little variations. Butterfly. Again, the staccato will be getting more and more wrist staccato all the time. Smiley down at the bottom says play the C's and the F's. So they will be going this way. C, F, C, F, C, F, all the way up. Changing hands. And they should be able to do that quite interestingly. Up, uh, butterfly left hand. try to put them hands together at this point. That comes later. It's really important to teach students in the beginning how to do things efficiently, hands separately. Um, I see so many students on YouTube and teachers showing off their students that have not got a clue about working hands separately. They get pushed and pushed and pushed to be able to do it hands together, to be able to do it fast. This is not a competition. This is to be able to learn to play the right way and to play well. Alrighty, so butterfly left hand. <laughs> Mr. Smiley down here. Let's call him Mr. Smiley. You can call him whatever you like. Do you notice I colored him? He's showing up a little more now because he's, uh, he's yellow. It says find all the D's on the piano. And his little verse is hey diddle diddle, the D in the middle of the two black keys. There it is. And happy helps you to find all of the D's. Hey diddle diddle. Hopping. Do you see the kangaroos down here? Aren't they cute? Judy Doris Jensen did all of the illustrations for all of the books. And she really deserves the Medal of Honor. These two little kangaroos are going shopping. They've got their little purses and their little baby joeys are in their pockets. It's so cute. I, I took the liberty of coloring books one, two, and three because they just show up better. But I was thinking afterwards, you know, you really should get the children to color each page because it catches the eye. Um, if I were to have these books done in color right now, they would cost twice as much. So we're not going there. Uh, you can't afford it and neither can I. So this way, if the children color the little illustrations, it's going to mean more to them. And you can see it better. And it draws attention to detail. And isn't that what piano is all about? The little details. Hopping. That's probably the easiest one. And kangaroo mall. Do you see Kangaroo Mall down here? <laughs> They're shopping with their friends. It says hop in here. Cool. Hopping left hand.
And again, you don't have to break that into parts unless you have a child who just doesn't hear it, who doesn't feel it on the keys. You don't sight read this. You teach it to them. They copy you down here. Rote teaching. Alrighty. Uh, uh, Happy says, Smiley, we're calling him Smiley. He says, find the C's, the F's, and the G's. It's getting a little more complicated now. Jump, jump, sit. And this is a one that need to go slow with because it's the only one where there's two staccato notes and an accented note. Smiley says clap and count, and the children get to answer this little quiz down here about the values of the notes. Jump, jump, sit, left hand. Now we have Run Pony. They get this right away. Left hand Run Pony. self-explanatory. Turtle walking needs a bit of explaining. There he is. There he is walking in the moonlight towards the sea. Old Mr. Turtle gets around in these, this series. He's used in several books. I'll give you, I'll tell you a secret. Turtle gets married. It's a love story. Here's Turtle walking, legato. Turtle walking, turtle walking. Or if you prefer, you can say turtle, turtle. It works. Legato is always this. Roll up the finger. Start here on the little doggy peg. Do you see the whorl, W-H-O-R-L, whorl on your finger? That's where you start and you roll forward. That's what legato is. Left hand turtle walking. takes us to the end of the variations. Now, Little Bird is actually the first melody piece that the children will learn. Or adult, you might get an adult who's in this book, you know, they don't mind. I, when I get an adult, I always say, well, you know, I hope it doesn't bother you that we're learning out of the children's series because we all have to learn like a child. Uh, before I teach you Little Bird, I want to go briefly back to the last piece in Book 1 to show you what I mean by sequential learning. If you recall, the last piece is right hand alone, left hand alone, hands together. Now you 
you might be wondering what these little red balls mean. You have to write them in your own book. I'm just putting them in there to show you today. That is a stop sign. You see that? That is a stop sign. Back to Basics children are very used to stop signs. It's like traffic lights. Stop. Think. Go. And this is used to teach them how to learn, how to memorize a piece in steps. So that, for example, if a child was playing this piece at a recital and they forgot where they were after step two, right? Suppose a child did this. <laughs> don't know where to go from there. They forget about this part. Uh, what we teach them is that they can repeat this step. They know that they're on step two. They can go back and play the whole thing again, or they can stop, think, and go where they are. So I'm going to elaborate on that a little bit. Step one, they play it. teacher says stop think go they play step two the teacher says stop think go play step three is the same as when you're at a stop sign or a traffic light. Let, let's say the, the red is stop, think is the orange amber light, go is the green light. We're all used to that. You can line them up this way if you want. Um, stop means literally stop. Think, where am I? What step am I on? Am I on step one, step two, step three, where am I? I'm on step one. I just finished step one. I'm stopping, thinking, where am I? I'm on step two. That's where I am. Where am I now? Well, I just finished step two. I am now going to play step three. And I know what step three is because I've memorized it. It's hands together. Now you might think this might be a waste of time. When I heard about it uh, long ago, I, I sort of thought, well, okay, what can we do with that? Why, why do we have to do that? Well, you know what? I had been doing that myself. When I was a concert pianist, when I was very young, ah, I thought to myself, okay, I'm going to chop this piece up into parts. I was doing it long ago without realizing it. When I studied Suzuki, they taught me how to break things down into steps. I took it a step further and I called it Stop, Think, Go. So... What a child would do is, let's take Little Bird, the next one in book two. That is step one. I would take a card out and I would put that on the piano somewhere. That is step one. What step is that? That's step one. Okay, step two. Let's play this. It's almost the same, we know, but it's a little bit different. So there are two steps in that piece, just two. And I would, after the child gets to know it, I would say, okay, instead of let's starting with step one, let's do step two first. Let's do just this one. All right, step two. And then back to step one, step whatever. 
Um, you know, this helps when you've got 400 steps in a piece. Of course, if you have that many in a piece, you also learn how to um, tag different sections, but we won't need that for now. What I do eventually, say we've got a piece with three or four, maybe even five steps. Here they are. Here's all the five steps. I scramble them up. I shuffle the cards. They love playing cards. I think everybody likes playing cards. And I, these are blank on the other side, so I say, you know, choose a card. Choose a card. Okay. Step five. Well, there you go. They would play only step five. It triggers it in their minds that that is always step five or step two as this goes. Beethoven's song. This is their second melody piece. There are other little pieces, peanut butter and so on. They are really just rhythm pieces, aren't they? And, and back to basics, it's rhythm, melody, harmony. They haven't really had any harmony yet. But Beethoven here is introducing his Ninth Symphony with his melody. And the words are, Beethoven wrote this music in his Ninth Symphony. And he did. Uh, I think in, in the other book it says uh, Three Fingers played the tune. He played it for you and me. So we've got step one. Hold up the card for the child. Make sure they know where they are at all times. Step two. Make a little set of cards for the student to take home. Amazon, very cheap, write on them with uh, the magic marker, the Sharpie, not the other kind of marker. You can only put Sharpie on these. They've been so handy for, for just about everything. Stop, I made stop, think, go signs too. So when we get to here, it's a stop, right? And... The child needs to know that. Take those very easily. That's called sequential learning, learning in a sequence. You don't need stop signs for here. You don't need numbers because they've already learned this piece in book one. Now they put it hands together. <laughs> That's not a big deal. Make sure you give children stickers. Uh, Teeter Totter Surprise is really an Alberti bass featuring Billy B, starring Billy B. There he is. Billy B, because it's going down to B. We knew this one already. Now, B, Billy B, that's the surprise. Okay, then back to C. Like that. If they get it wrong, I tell them the bee's going to sting them, and I just give them a little love pick with their fingernail, and they jump. <laughs> so they usually get this piece um, very well. It's so good for the fingers because we're moving this way, nice and loose. Alberti bass is good. It's used with so many things in piano, isn't it? <laughs> Totter surprise. Here we go. B. B. You probably don't need to use the steps for that, but you know, it's just a, it's an exercise, isn't it? We know it as an Alberti bass exercise from dear old Mr. Domenico Alberti. Um, don't tell them that. It's teeter totter surprise because it's saying teeter totter. Uh, this is important down at the bottom. Make sure you read this. 
Book one also has with it, as its companion books, Music Maps Book One and Playwright Book One. Music Maps is sight reading, Playwright is uh, writing notes. Book two, ha that's where we're in now, has Music Maps Book Two and Super Kid Book One. Super Kid is a practice uh, book and the children like it. You know, children have a very different sense of humor than adults. Um, the Super Kid book is cartoons, and they love cartoons. Alrighty, here we go. More teeter-totter surprises. <laughs> getting very advanced now with the Alberti bass and it's in three different places C E G B D G C F A I'm going to play that again close your eyes listen to where it changes This is another uh, technique. It's not really a piece, but I tell the children it's you love me. You know, um, I ask them who they love. They, this is a picture of me. Children like to talk about themselves and draw pictures of themselves. Picture of me. It's about me and that you love me. Uh, every day I brush my teeth. Every day I wash my hands. Every day I play my piano. Every day I eat my dinner. Every day I learn new things. Um, I say, who who loves you? Well, you love me. My mommy loves me. Daddy loves me. My dog loves me. So you love me is on B, D, G. That chord. And that's all there is to it, except that it ends on a C. Don't tell them it's a finger exercise or you'll lose them. It's a you love me piece. You love me, you love me. I just say, let's count how many there are. There are seven, and then there's the ending. Okay? <laughs> Good enough. And then we mix it up. Here's the little dance. I love you, you love me. C, E, G, B, D, G. One child drew Valentine's hearts all over the place to show all the people that she loved and they who loved her. Um, you can teach this in sequential learning if you wish. There are two steps here. Two. Um, step one, stop, think, go. There's a stop sign. They'll get used to the stop signs. Step two, right there. Um, however, that was a comma there. However, they have already had this in their other book. So it's easy now to put it hands together. I like that piece, also known as Mary Had a Little Lamb. Here's Little Bird in his glory. He is so perked up since I colored him singing away. It shows up so much better, don't you think? You know, you could even color some of the books. Uh, have, have If you play this piece beautifully, we can take two minutes and color that bird. That's what usually works for me. Bribery. Bribery works every time. Here's a little bird. Here he goes. <laughs> Step one, step two. Sometimes the, uh, for some children, the idea of step one and two is too easy. But I'll tell you, they need it when they get into a piece like this. Now I'm finished my book two. I can play my songs for you. I could play with my two hands. I can play together. Here we go. I 
can't sing very well. I'll try. The words are effective. Children like to sing this song. Now I finish my book too. I can play my songs for you. I can play with my two hands. I can play together. I know we have some singers on our Back to Basics teachers groups. Um, Michelle, I need you to sing this one. <laughs> I was speaking with Michelle earlier today, and she said she used to study singing. And I did hear her sing. She could do a lot better job than, than I did, but you'll just have to just stuck with me for now. So we've got four steps. Isn't that exciting? And it's a nice big chunk for children to have at the end of their book. So step one. Step two. Step three. Step four. Let's lay them all out here. Step one. Step two. Step three, step four, and it's up here. Did you see what's happening there in the left hand? I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. Me, you love me. Aha, uh -huh. they spot them right away. Oh, there's a you love me right here. All right, so make the, them stop at the end of this one. Step one, stop. Okay.